Let's keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping. He's a good God. He's an awesome God. The one that provides for us. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for his goodness, for his provision, for his protection. He's our defender. He's our defense. He's the one that is keeping us alive. Let's just appreciate him right now. Clap for Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. People of God, the psalmist looked all around at what God had done in his life. And in Psalm 116, 12 to 13, he asked the question, says, what shall I render unto Jehovah? For he has done, for he has done. Father, we thank you. It is only the living that can thank you. King of glory, if we look back at all the things you have done for us in the past, how you have supported us, you have helped us, you have healed us, you have delivered us, you have provided for us, you have defended us, how you have lifted us up, you have done all great and mighty things, O oh Lord, for us. Father, if we had a thousand tongues, we can't thank you enough. All we can say today is to bring praises and thanksgiving, O oh Lord. Father, we say thank you. We say thank you. Jehovah, we say thank you. King of glory, O oh Lord, from the bottom of our hearts, we say thank you. Father, we say thank you for your goodness, for your mercy. It is only because of your mercy that we're still alive. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you, King of glory, Lord, for the blood of Jesus that protects, that even speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Father, we say thank you. We bless your holy name. Our gathering this morning all over the world is unto you. Father, oh Lord, please show up in our midst. King of glory, heal us, deliver us, accept every sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Do that which you alone can do. Let our joys be full. Let this month be the best month yet. Father, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Please be seated in his wonderful presence. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank God for a God that speaks, and once he speaks, he stands firm. My prayer is that all that God will say today, you will believe, and you will testify in Jesus' mighty name. The month of October has been declared in this our church and in our lives as a month that we're not just going to walk or run in victory, but we're going to soar in victory. We are going to fly in victory. It's time to fly. God is telling someone that it is time to fly. No more crawling. No more walking. No more running. It is time to fly. I believe it. Say, I believe it. And you will fly in victory in Jesus' mighty name not in defeat. Amen? You will fly in victory in Jesus' mighty name. It's time to fly high, to ascend to greater heights. There will be promotions. God will lift you high. This is your month of greater heights in Jesus' mighty name. You are going to get to a place where no one in your generation has ever attained. 
Say, I believe. Say, I receive. My father of blessed memory used to tell us that low aim is crime. It is time to fly. Low aim is crime. It is time for you to fly. I will fly. Amen. Hallelujah. People of God, when you soar like an eagle or you fly like an eagle, you are gaining momentum and things are happening in rapid succession. This month you gain momentum. I say you will gain momentum. This month, if there's a book you want to read, it has to be the Ivy League. We are a peculiar people. The Ivy League. It will encourage you. It will tell you the things you need to do. And my prayer is that everything that we read in this book will come to pass in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. This month is going to be better than all the other months put together in Jesus' mighty name. God will add wind to your sail. He will help you. You will overtake those that have gone behind, uh, ahead in Jesus' mighty name. You will soar in Jesus' mighty name. And God will cause you to glide over your enemies in Jesus' mighty name. You will fly over sickness. I say sickness will not come your way. You will fly over sorrow. You will fly over depression. You will fly over stagnation, over sin, over poverty, over failure, over pain, over every disappointment, over joblessness, over fear, over barrenness, over single chronic uh, singleness, over untimely death. You will not die. You will leave. You will leave. You will not die. We withdraw your name from the book of death. We withdraw you from the congregation of the dead. We say that the power of the grave will shattered over your life. You will fulfill destiny. You will fulfill destiny. Your joy will be full. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Say, I believe. I receive. People of God, remember that this is a prophetic service. It's not an ordinary service. Every word that is spoken here is from the throne room of God. All it needs is for someone to agree. And once there's agreement, there will be a performance. I say you will not die. I say you fly over sickness, over fear, over poverty, over barrenness. You will be fruitful. You will be fruitful. You will be distinguished. You will excel. You will be excellent. Your children will excel. Everything you lay your hands to shall prosper. Your joy will be full. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. People of God, this month you are going to be untouchable. I say untouchable. The Bible says in 1 Chronicles 16, 22, 1 Corinthians 16, 22 says, Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. And everyone or anyone that dares to touch you, they will be consumed by fire. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 1, 7, Hebrews 1, 7 says, his ministers, he made them flames of fire. Anyone that dares to touch you, as Jeroboam said that they should touch that prophet that came to prophesy on the altar, as he stretched forth his hand, his hand withered. Everyone that stretches all for their hand to slow you down this month, their hand will wither in Jesus' mighty name. And they will catch fire and be destroyed in Jesus' mighty name. Say, I believe. People of God, the Bible tells us in Psalm 91 and 1, Psalm 91 and 1, it says, you are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. The enemy cannot find you. You are under the shadow of the Almighty. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. It cannot prosper. Every arrow shot against you will be returned to sender. It will backfire and blow in the face of those that sent it in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, no one can find you under the shadow of the Almighty. Because your life is hid with Christ inside God. They cannot find you. Amen? People of God, I prophesy into your life. That that covering that is coming upon your life is stronger than that which the Israelis call the Iron Dome. The Iron Dome can protect just 90%. But under the shadow of the Almighty, 
is a hundred and one percent, a million percent. No one can touch you. Amen. No one can touch you. This month, no evil will touch you. No evil will touch you. No weapon fighting against you, spiritual or physical, shall prosper. Because I am under that rock. The rock that's higher than I. Hey, Jehovah hides me. I am under the rock. Go, 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 go. Go shall my enemies. I am under the rock. Jehovah. The name, please be seated. Please be seated in his wonderful presence, amen. Hallelujah! No calamity, no more sorrow, no more weeping, amen. We are flying high, amen. People of God, we are going to use as a backdrop this month the story of David and Goliath. We all know the story, it's a very notorious story in First Samuel 17. We are going to just do a preview today. And I pray that all throughout the month we are going to develop it. As we know, David was the last child of Jesse. And um, the story says that on this day of celebration, he was overlooked by every member of the family. God sent Samuel to his house and said, go and anoint someone there. When I get there, I will tell you who that person is. People of God. Everybody thought that he was the unlikely candidate. And they sent him to the woods to keep the sheep. People of God. But David was handpicked by God. God will handpick someone today in Jesus' name. David was brought into the limelight. You will be brought into the limelight today in Jesus' name. He became the most important king of Israel. And God personally said, this is a man after my own heart. God will move somebody from the backside of the desert, amen, to prominence, amen. He will move you from zero to hero, amen. amen. People of God, yes, you are unknown before, but today and this month, you become God's celebrity. Amen. It is God himself that will announce you. People of God, the Lord will use your testimony to announce you. Amen. I say the Lord will use your testimony to announce you. If we tell you a story here in this church, you know of that lady, barren for 17 years, came to this church, did the last dance, went back to the U.S., attacked her husband straight from the car. That same month, God got her pregnant. And in nine months, God gave her not one, not two, but three children, triplets, to cut short the years that she has lost. People of God, I say your testimony will announce you. Yeah. Remember the 5th of January 2020? Someone came to the Trinity Towers for that service. He said, Father, before the end of today, before this service ends, I must meet my husband. And as she was walking out, someone said, Hi. Ah, today they are married to the glory of God. Let's clap for Jesus. May I say, your testimony will be used by God to announce you. Say, I believe. Say, I receive. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, to soar in victory, to fly in victory, you must possess the following six attributes. The first one, you must know who you are. You must know who you are in Christ Jesus. If you don't know who you are, people will tell you who you are. Your circumstances will define you. They will define you. The fact that I failed once doesn't make me a failure. The fact that I fall doesn't mean that I'm going to stay down. 
Don't brand me by my present circumstance. Because that which you see <coughs> is temporary. I am going higher. Amen? I am flying higher. If you don't know who you are, they will define you. 2,000 years after blind Bartimaeus was made whole, and it's like they still call him blind Bartimaeus. 2,000 years. The woman with the issue of blood, they are still calling her the woman with the issue of blood. Or they were healed. If you don't know who you are, people will define you. Your circumstance will define you. People of God, Goliath, the towering giant of Gath, terrorized the children of Israel for 40 days. He terrorized the king. And he told them who they were. And they believed it. He looked at them. He said that these are the armies of Saul. These are the armies and servants of Saul. He says these are the armies of Israel. First Kings 17, 7 to 11. He defined them. They believed it. They were terrified. They saw themselves as the armies of Israel. They saw themselves as the servants of Saul. People of God, you need to know that Satan would deceive people. Colossians or Corinthians, first, second Corinthians 4.4, 4, the Amphibian version. Second Corinthians 4.4, 4, it says it blinds the eyes of those who are unbelievers. He will make you believe a lie. They believed it. Saul told David, he says, you are not able to take on this man, Goliath. He says, you are just a youth. This man has been a warrior from his youth. He's bigger than you. His armor is bigger than you. You are outnumbered because he has an armor bearer. He says, you cannot do, you are inexperienced. You are smaller in size. Eliab, the brother of David, who was intimidated by the success of David, came to him. He was envious. He wanted to limit him. He wanted to truncate his destiny. And he reminded him that he was just a shepherd boy. What are you doing here? This place is for the big boys. Stay with the sheep. People of God, you need to ignore all those naysayers, all those circumstances that are telling you it is impossible. All those circumstances and people that are telling you you cannot make it in life. People of God, those that are saying that promotion is not for you, that they are not talking about you, that you are not going to fly high. You need to pull down all those imaginations. They are from the pits of hell. They are discouragers. They are destiny killers. Voices and circumstances talking you down. They are telling you what you are supposed to be. Setting limits and boundaries for you. Impossibilities. People of God, you need to ignore them. They are contending with God's plan for your life. People of God, they are expecting you to fear like all the others. But David told Abia, uh, his brother in 1 Kings 17 and verse 29. He says in 1 Kings 17, and I says, I'm here on a mission. I am here for a purpose. I know who I am. God has a plan for my life. Don't hinder me. And he moved away from him. Everyone that does not celebrate you, everyone that does not lift you high, everyone that does not encourage you, they are destiny killers. And this month, God will consume all of them in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, you need to remember that at this time, David had already been anointed king. Many people forget that in 1 Samuel 16, this is 1 Samuel 17, in 1 Samuel 16, Samuel had come, 16 verse 12 to 13. He had anointed him king. The spirit of the Lord had come upon him. He was king in waiting. He was royalty. He had moved from being a shepherd to royalty. A special one loved by God above every other person. He was the apple of God's eyes. 
People of God, hey, you need to know who you are. David knew who he was. I might be short. I might be ruddy. I might be ugly. I might not have money. But I know who I am. I know how God sees me. He told Goliath, he said, these are not Saul's armies. These are not Saul's servants. These are the armies of the living God who you defy. The armies of the Lord of hosts. He says that, yes, this battle, you are going to lose it. He says the battle is not between me and you. It's between you, your God, and my God. People of God, you need to know who you are. Or else they will limit you. He said, these are the armies of the living God. If you are an eagle, you need to know that you are not like all the other scavengers. Like hen and all that. You are heaven bound. All those ones are earth bound. A hen or a cock cannot fly high. You are flying 10,000 miles ahead. Amen? You are a peculiar person. No one like you on the face of this earth. People of God, God has great plans for you. A bespoke plan for you. You are a blessing to your generation. You need to know who you are. People of God, you need to know who you are. People of God, David looked at Goliath and told him who he was. Colossians 2.15, the message version. Colossians 2.15, it says, God had stripped all spiritual tyrants in the universe of their authority at the cross and marked them naked through the streets. People of God, you need to know that right now all power in heaven and earth belongs to Jesus and he wants to give it to you. Indeed, he has given it to you. You need to tell the devil the truth. You need to know the truth that you are more than a conqueror. That you are a king, a priest after the order of Melchizedek. An order that does not end. That you are a child of God. People of God, people think that the one that is in us is that Jesus, meek and gentle. No, 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 no. The one that is in us that is greater than any challenge is the risen Christ. Amen? The risen Christ is described in Revelation 1, 13 to 16. Revelation 1, 13 to 16 says he has a golden gadu. He has white hair. Out of his eyes, fire comes. He says his voice is like the voice of many waters. He says his feet is like burning brass. He says his countenance is like that of a son. People of God, that is the one you are carrying around. That is why I know you cannot fail. I say you cannot fail. He has in his hand seven stars. Out of his mouth, a double-edged sword. That is the one that is inside you. Greater is he that is inside you than he that is in the world. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. You need to tell them that you are destined to be the head and not the tail. You cannot fail. You will not fail. You will not fail in Jesus' mighty name. Say, I will not fail in Jesus' mighty name. I cannot be intimidated. I cannot be intimidated. You are far above powers and principalities. You are seated with Christ. You are seated with Christ. People of God, for you, victory is not a goal to achieve. It is your inheritance. It is your inheritance in Christ. People of God, Jesus has won the war and has given you the victory. You are more than a conqueror. You are not a victim trying to get victory. You are not a victim trying to get victory. You are already victorious. You are already victorious. The devil is only trying to make you a victim again. And he will fail in Jesus' mighty name. God does not need you to defeat the devil. He did that 2,000 years ago. All God is asking you to do is to enforce the victory. People of God, the Bible tells us in Psalm 115 and 16 
Psalm 1, 5, 6, it says, the heaven belongs to God. The earth he has given to the sons of men. This earth belongs to you and I. It does not belong to the demons. It does not belong to the devil. You cannot give him space. He has no space. You have to push him away. People of God, you must push him away. This earth belongs to us. It does not belong to the enemy. Don't be intimidated by any noisome pestilence, by any giant, by height or death. The battle is the Lord's. This one, God is fighting your battles. David told God, don't worry about how I look. Don't worry about my weapons. You are ignorant because you think this is my battle. The battle is the Lord's. You need to know who you are. Once you know who you are, you will not be intimidated in Jesus' mighty name. Say, I will not be intimidated. People of God, the three towers cannot intimidate us. However big and massive it is, it cannot intimidate us. Because except the Lord builds, it is the Lord that is building. He's just using us. He's the Lord that is building. And God told us that five people in this church can single-handedly finish and build the Trinity Towers. And they know themselves. God revealed them to us. And we are not doing something that has not been done before. In Luke 7, 5, in Luke 7, 5, it is only one man. One man. Everybody say one man. One man built the whole of the synagogue. A synagogue is massive church. One man built it. David said, look, I want to build for the Lord. He has the resources. God is going to use one man. God is going to use one person here, amen, to build and finish the three towers. If you are the one, say, I am the one. I am the one. You need to know who you are in Christ Jesus. People of God. The second thing you need to know is that you need to be focused on your goal. You need to be focused on your goal. You need to be motivated. David did not see a problem. He did not see a giant. He did not see failure. All he saw was an uncircumcised Philistine trying to shame and bring reproach to the living God. Trying to defy the armies of the living God. People of God, in his life he put God first. And this month, if you want to excel, you want to fly, you must put God first. You must be focused on your goal and you must be motivated. People of God, he was doing it for God's reputation. People of God, he said that I've been young and I'm now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his children beg for bread. Darkness cannot coexist side by side with light. Sickness cannot coexist side by side with Jesus. Poverty cannot coexist side by side with Jesus because Christ became poor so that you and I can become rich. You need to be focused. You need to know the promise of God and you need to be motivated. That song we used to sing says, Eshuole kole ti Jesus. Eshuole kole ti Jesus. If he busy, we would destroy it. That's why I know today is a day of deliverance. Every problem you are brought to light, that problem must disappear today in Jesus' mighty name. Say, I believe. You cannot be in the presence of God and go back sick. You cannot be in the presence of God and go back empty. God will satisfy you today in Jesus' mighty name. God will answer you today in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. There is no circumstance that can defy God. No one can see the end of his grace. Ah. No one can see the end of your love.
what's that goal what is that thing that is motivating you something must motivate you God is a rewarder Hebrews 11 6 he is a rewarder he has not called you to serve him in vain he will reward your labor of love your work will be rewarded in verse 25, 26, 27, and 30 of first, first Samuel 17, verse 25 to 26, 27 to 30. Many times, David was saying, what did they say they would give to the person who will kill these giants? They said, ah, ah. Number one, great riches. Then you will marry the king's daughter. And your family will be tax-free. He asked many, many times, about three times or four times. He was asking. People of God, something must motivate you. Isaiah 43, 19. Isaiah 43, 19. He says, I'm about to do something new. I've already started. Can't you see it? God has started some great things. He's a rewarder. He's going to reward you. Habakkuk 2 3. Habakkuk 2 3, the message version. He said the vision message is a witness pointing to what's coming. It aches for the coming. It can hardly wait and it doesn't lie. It seems slow in coming. Wait. It's on its way. It will come right on time. I say that blessing is on the way. By the end of this service, you see that God has moved in your situation in Jesus' mighty name. Say, I believe. Say, I receive. Your labor will not be in vain in Jesus' mighty name. I say, your labor will not be in vain. Amen. And God says to tell someone that fear not, it is I. You will know within seven days. Amen. So I don't know what's going to happen, but it says, fear not, it is I. You will know within seven days. People of God, what is motivating you? David wanted to build for God. Solomon was motivated by service unto God. How to serve his people well. He says, I need wisdom. I need understanding. We are building Twin Towers because of our CSR. We want to do more work. We can see souls being touched all over the world. People of God, what is pushing you? What is motivating you? Anna wanted to give God a son. People of God, God is looking for worshippers. Worshippers. My prayer is that something will motivate you. God is a rewarder. God and his reward will motivate you in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, David had lived in the palace before now. They had called him. He had lived in the palace. He had been to the palace before. He knew the difference between being in the bush and in the palace. He knew the difference. He knew that, look, if I can just get this thing out of the way, I'm entering into mega success. Someone is entering into mega success this month in Jordan. There is a difference between economy and first class. I've flown the two. There is a difference. God wants to move you higher. There is a difference between being a tenant and owning a house of your own. If you are a tenant, they will wake you up at 6 a.m. to come and move your car. There are always fights and things like that. But if you are in your own house, you can park your, house, your car anywhere and anyhow. And yesterday I visited a place, an estate owned by a man. Over 120 houses. So there are various levels. You are going to move from being a tenant to owning a city. That is your portion. Amen. God did it for a general say He will do it for you in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, David had a mental picture of where he was going. He knew it was time to fly. He had seen servants on horses and princes walking. Today, 
God is going to take you higher in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, the third thing is that you must yield your time, your resources, yourself unto God. Usually what God uses is what is already with you. What is already around you. What possibly you have tested before. David had tested his sling on birds, on rabbits. It was time to go out of the comfort zone and take a risk and take a bigger situation. And God is telling someone, step out. Step out. God is waiting for you. Don't be afraid. You need to step out. God is telling you, you need to step out. He has already given you what you require for the next level. He uses what you have. David could not use the armor of Saul. He used what he was accustomed to. People of God, God can turn what is not enough to more than enough. Two fishes and five loaves of bread was used by God to feed 5,000 and more. And after it, there were 12 baskets left. All you need to do is to turn it over to God. Turn your resources to God. Turn your money to God. Turn your talent to God. Everything you have turned it to God. God can use the rod of Moses to part the Red Sea. The rod of Aaron, he bordered, he fruited. He separated him from mean men. People of God, the pot of oil of that widow was what God used. David used his sling. People of God, those that God will use to lift you this month, they are already around you. Influencers, God will open your eyes. Your destiny helpers will locate you. Amen? They will locate you. I say they will locate you. They will contact you this week. I said they will contact you this week. You will receive that phone call this week. You will receive that email this week. Before Friday, they will contact you. They are already around you. They are already around you. What God is going to use today, you already have it. How many of us have a dancing feat? A miracle is in the dance. You don't have to look elsewhere. Just dance. That's what God wants to use. Even today, he wants to use your feet. My prayer is that God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, the next thing as I run to a close, this month, if you want to fly, is a month of prophetic declaration. You must counter all the lies of the enemy. And that's what David did. The Bible says that Goliath caused him with his gods. But David, ah, David declared the future. He declared the future. He declared what he wanted to do. In 1 Samuel 17, 45 to 47, people of God, God has given you a mouth and a tongue that all your adversaries cannot resist. That is Luke 21, 15. He says you will decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. People of God, you need to speak up. The Bible says in Proverbs 18:21 that death and life is in the power of the tongue, and they that love it will eat the fruits thereof. So whatever you say shall die today will die. Whatever you say shall go, shall go. Whatever you say shall come, shall come. You need to make prophetic declarations. There's going to be a Sunday, God willing, that all we are going to do is just to make prophetic declarations. Because as you speak in the ears of God, so shall he do unto you in Jesus' mighty name. That's what David did, and that's what you need to do. You need to predict your future, that it's going to be well with you, that you will excel, that God will enlarge your coast. You need to prophesy, and you will prophesy in Jesus' mighty name. Two more things and I'm done. The next thing is that you must be willing to fly. You are willing to fly. In 1 Samuel 17, verse 22, David ran to the battleground. In verse 48, he ran to Goliath. 
in verse 51, he ran to cut off the head of Goliath. He was in a hurry. God is in a hurry. That is why the first seven days and the last seven days of this month is so significant. God is in a hurry. It is time to run, to fly, to fly. My prayer is that you will fly high this month in Jesus' mighty name. David did not walk. He ran. He was always running. He knew that he needed to gain momentum. People of God, this month, as we emulate David, God will prosper us in all our ways in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, lastly, what can make a man run towards Goliath? Hmm. He had experienced God's faithfulness in the past. In verse 34 to 37, he told Saul, but I remember when a bear came, God helped me. I killed it. A lion came. I killed it. He says, the same God who has helped me in the past will help me to take off the head of this problem that is ahead of me. Proverbs 3, 6. Proverbs 3, 6 says, acknowledge God in all your ways and he will direct your path. You need to thank him. Acknowledge him for all the victories. Thanksgiving is a password. Once you acknowledge him, that is the one that put food on your table. He's the one that put you where you are right now. He's the one that even sorted you out in the past. And that is why we are here, to thank him for what he has done in the past. Then the Holy Spirit becomes your decoder. For someone, this month, today, the Holy Spirit becomes your decoder. He's the one that would decode all the strategies and the plans of the enemy. He told David, don't move near him. Send a scout missile. Send a drone. Goliath was looking at him, thinking that I'm bigger than you. My sword is bigger than you. I will cut off your head. But he was saying that, no, 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 I'm not even going to come near you. He sent a scout missile, a drone. People of God. The Holy Spirit will decode what you need to do to excel. He will tell you who you need to call. He will tell you what you need to do. In so far as you acknowledge him in all your ways. He says he will direct your path. People of God, today we're going to acknowledge God in all our ways. And thank him for what he has done in the past. Then we can fly. And as we fly this month, we will accomplish everything in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, David said one thing in verse 37 of 4 Samuel and 17. He says, the same God that did it before, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me again. If he did it before, he will do it again. Your name of Jesus. You're very great. If he did it before. People of God, he referred to the testimonies of God in his life. Today we have I can't stay silent number three. Let's clap for Jesus. He's going to be giving free to us. Amen. But please, if you want to sow, you can sow anything from 2000 and up. The proceeds will be used for the Trinity Towers. People of God, in this book, volume three, Page 20, cancer disappears after last dance. Page 21, the dead was raised after last dance. 23, healed of toothache, toothache after last dance. 25, blessed with a home after last dance. 
connect with it. Amen. Page 27. Safe delivery of triplets after last dance. And that's the second one. Amen. Page 28. Five blood disappears after last dance. 30. High blood pressure disappears after last dance. The same 30. Breast cancer disappears after last dance. 31. Arthritis disappears after last dance. 38. Status change from single to married after last dance. And 38. Healed after watching Last Dance Online. Praise the name of the Lord. That is what David did. He acknowledged God for what he had done in the past. Today, what you need to excel, God has given you. You need to dance. Use your feet to dance. And that's what we're going to do. We'll start the dance. And after the duo finishes, we'll connect and continue the dance. But if you are here, you don't know Jesus Christ, your pastor, Lord and Savior. Please, you are the only one that God is speaking to right now. David had a covenant relationship with God. He knew God. He knew who he was in God. He was focused. He lived for God. God rewarded him. Everything boils down to God. God opened his eyes because he was filled with the Holy Spirit when he was anointed king and told him what to do, what weapon to use, strategies to excel, what you need to do to fly, to go to the next level. God will give it to you. But first, whether you're online or you're here, you need to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. David was anointed by God filled with the Holy Spirit. He was a child of God. He knew he could not fail. That confidence to fly, that confidence that you need to know you cannot fail, you need it. Your life begins when you surrender your life to Jesus Christ. So, as well as I close, are you here? You want your name to be registered as one of those that will excel this month. You want your name to be registered in heaven as a child of God. Lift up your hands. Just lift up that hand. Lift up your hand. And if you are online, lift up that hand right now. Lift it up, lift up, lift high. Lift it high. Just lift it to God. Nothing can happen unless you are signed in as a member of the family of God. Let's clap for Jesus. Amen. And if you are lifting up your hands, just lift it. Wait for the ushers. They will give you a gift. Just lift up your hands. They will give you a card. Amen. Lift that hand. And if you are online, just repeat after me. And if you are here, just repeat after me. And say, Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. With my mouth, I confess that Jesus, from today, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I plead the blood of Jesus to wash me clean of every unrighteousness. Please write my name in the book of life. Help me to fulfill destiny. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And Spirit of God, please operate in my life as a decoder. Teach me how to walk what to do. I come against the spirit of error. I will no longer make mistakes. Father, please help me. In Jesus' mighty name. If you say that prayer, welcome to the family of God. This month, you will fly in Jesus' mighty name.